Welcome, Andy. Thank you very much for that uh, warm introduction, Peter. Uh, so as the description of the event stated there, we've got two parts to this really. One part, I'll just kind of go through one of the, the training modules that we do with all of our uh, newer hires so that you get a little bit of an idea of what it's like to work in a classroom here in Japan. Looks like Paul decided to jump out again. Yeah, I think Paul wants to get that hoiki thing going for himself. So <laughs> <laughs> he knows what you do anyway, Andy. Yeah. That's so what nice yeah. All right. But um, so we've got the first part here where we'll go over a little bit about what it's like to work in a public school classroom, mm -hmm. going over a few of the differences between uh, working in schools versus working in a, a private business like an Aikaiwa or a other uh, private English school. And then uh, for the second half, we'll go over a little bit about uh, how to apply for a job to work as an ALT uh, with us at Interact North. All right, so this is uh, one of the, the early modules that we share with our instructors. And we really just wanna stress the, the importance of using simple English uh, so that the students in, uh, all the students can uh, understand and participate. Uh, this leads to one of the discussions about the biggest differences between public schools and Aikaiwas. Uh, for public schools, it's compulsory education. Everyone has a right to receive it. Uh, what that means is that uh, all levels of students need to be able to participate. So you, you have to tailor your, your teaching style, your, your teaching uh, content, and also your English level uh, so that all the kids can be able to understand and get something out of it. Uh, sometimes when you work in an Aikaiwa situation, they, they ask you to use a lot of English, a lot of different English, just to get students used to hearing a lot of different words, learning new phrases. Uh, but uh, in, in a public school classroom, they really want you to stick to the, the same basic classroom English so that all the students are able to understand and participate. Uh, adding on to the classroom English there, you also obviously want to use gestures. This is the same as other, other types of uh, classrooms too. Uh, you do want to use gestures to help with understanding. And then again, uh, simplify, simplify, simplify. Okay, so some of the most basic parts here, just um, how do we get students to understand? First up, you want to repeat commands. So that's repeat commands or repeat commands. This will help the students engage. Uh, the more that you say it, the more that they realize it's going to be important. Um, but obviously, you don't want to go on and on too much and, and bore them to death. Sometimes you, you hear like, uh, the only thing that the kids remember is please repeat. And if you've gone that far, you probably went too far. Um, but at the same time, if you only say things once, they're probably not gonna catch it. Next up, be consistent with your commands. Uh, this is just gonna be simplify, simplify and use the same commands. If they hear it uh, one time and then they learn what you're gonna do or what you want them to do, then the next time you use that same command, they'll be able to catch on much more quickly. Uh, third there, support your commands with gestures. Show, don't just tell. So if you want them to look at something, if you need them to listen, uh, but give them some help other than the words, uh, because many of them, uh, they won't understand what you're saying, uh, but uh, it should be pretty easy for them to see, uh, look at you and then understand what you want them to do uh, if they're able to see what you're trying to get them to do. And then last up, project your voice. Uh, don't yell, but you do need to project your voice in a public school classroom setting. The rooms can be quite large and there could be up to 40, 45 students, especially at the elementary school level where they're full of energy. It might take a little bit more volume to get your voice heard. Okay, so here's an example of a bad way of trying to give instructions. It's very wordy, it's too long, and it uses some difficult words. And so just take a little bit of time here, try and simplify it down so that it's easier to understand and you'll have a better chance of getting students to, to participate.
give you about a minute to think about it. Well, I don't know if I'd even understand all that. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, when I watch the uh, the application videos, the demo videos, sometimes you get this, and uh, it's it's always amazing to see the development of people after they take training and after they get into the classroom and they realize it's not going to work. Um, I mean, I say that it's important to simplify the language so the students are able to understand, but uh, it, it's also fun to watch and amazing to see how quickly our, our teachers develop too, and are able to pick up, uh, oh, okay, if I just kind of cut it down, cut it down to about something like this, uh, everybody's a bit happier. The students will do what you want them to do, and uh, the students will have fun doing the activities as well. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. We've got a few more very common phrases that should be using to teach in a classroom. Try and simplify these down a little bit too. Yeah, most of them can just be short to uh, two or three words. Yeah, for the for the newbies, not Tarzan English, but uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is much easier to to work with than the previous, I guess, paragraph or page there, uh, because most of what you can use to get uh, easy understanding is already in here. You just kind of take the key parts of each of the sentences you'd be in pretty good shape there. Just stand up, sit down, listen, repeat after me, wait, start, stop. Uh, I like to use finished myself, but uh, stop works as well. And then if you're feeling polite, uh, which uh, you don't always need to be with the kids, but uh, if you're feeling polite, just go ahead, slap a please right in front of there and you'll be all right too. Okay, I think Peter gave us one of the keys of uh, actually things to avoid there. You don't want to use Tarzan English or caveman English. So we don't want to get into the, the flow of saying you stand, you sit. And you do want to use actual English. It can be very brief or short. Um, but they should make sense in terms of uh, the phrasing or the almost a sentence. And then uh, also no Japanese, please. Uh, this is very true in Eikao as well, but also in, in the public school classroom. Uh, the idea is that we're here as ALTs to speak English with the kids, uh, share English with them. And if they did want Japanese uh, instructions, then they would just ask the Japanese teachers to do it. All right, so we've gone over a little bit about how to use simple English to, to help with understanding. Next up, let's take a little bit of time to go over some gestures then to, to make it even easier to understand for the kids. Okay, so here are some of the most basic, basic gestures that you'll be using in the classroom. If you can think of ones that uh, you like better and the kids also pick up on quickly, you're obviously welcome to use those as well. But uh, for some of the ones that we recommend, uh, here you go, stand up is just a very simple, oh, you can't see my hands actually. Uh, listen, I prefer to use both ears. Start, if you give them a good, let's go. 
And then good there looks like uh, Anthony on the left is doing a heart. And then Joshua on the right is just doing the traditional Japanese modern. Okay. So go ahead and take a, a minute or two here, try out your own gestures. Yeah, we get a couple more. We can reorder them. You got YMCA on there. Yeah, yeah. I think using these virtual backgrounds, it's uh, difficult to actually see what I'm doing, though. I put my hand up and you just see part of it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so stand up, some recommended gestures. If you just lift your hands up, sit down, just do the opposite, bring your hands down. Listen, again, I just like to use the, the hands on, around the ears. Repeat after me. Very often you'll see three and four together. And so you just do listen and repeat, listen and repeat. Wait, you can just give them the, the hands up there, wait start some kind of starting gesture and then stop you could also just wave your hands stop okay hopefully you found some good gestures that work for you too next slide up here we talk about praise then uh, so we've we've gone over instructions and instructions are a very important part of teaching um, but for, for these students in the classrooms, you also want to be able to praise them and encourage them to participate too. So it's important that you get them to do the activity. And then if they've done it, once they've done it, you tell them they've done a good job. And the first thing that we'll say here, it's very important to use a very a different voice from your default voice. Uh, so you, you need to have a number of different voices when you're teaching. You have your instructions voice and you have your praise voice, and you have a few others as well. Uh, you need some character voices if you're gonna do a dialogue uh, with multiple people by yourself, for example. Um, but for your praise voice, you want it to be very, very warm and you want them to be able to instantly understand that uh, they're, they're being praised. Um, but it's also important to remember, you need to be genuine. So if, uh, if you're praising somebody and you just say, oh, good job, good job, good job. It uh, doesn't seem very nice, or they, they're not going to be very encouraged, not going to be very motivated. Uh, you definitely want to put some uh, feeling into it and let them know that uh, you, you're proud of them. So back it up with a gesture, and it'll make it even that more meaningful. Uh, here are some very basic words, uh, praise words that the students will understand. Good, good work. Good job. Great. Nice. Or yeah, these are things that the kids have probably heard before. If not in the classroom, then, then maybe on TV or uh, in a movie. Um, but if you stick to these ones, they'll, they'll have a good idea of what you're trying to tell them. And they should be uh, more, more motivated to join in the next time too. All right. Welcome, Simon. Next up here, uh, we just uh, let's try a, a more complicated activity for ourselves. Then we've taken this page from Hi Friends, and um, here's what uh, we need the kids to do. These instructions are a bit complicated, so take a minute here. Think of how you can simplify it down for easier understanding.
right, how did you do? Here's a, a very straightforward recommendation. We just stick with the keywords. What are we trying to get them to do? Open your books, listen, listen and write here. Ready? And then just back that up with gestures as well. If you open your books, show them the actual page, listen, listen and write here. Ready? Okay. Now let's try and sum up this whole session here. If you remember only one thing from this presentation, try and make it this slide because it will give you a, a, a brief summary of what you want to do. When you're given instructions in the classroom, we like to go with the simple abbreviation of G, E, and S. Yes. So G, we've got gestures. Show them what you want them to do. Uh, there'll be some students that just don't understand any English at all. Uh, but if you show them, even those kids will be able to pick up on what you're trying to get them to do. E for energy. Uh, the kids want to see you having fun. If you're having fun, it's easier for the kids to have fun. Sometimes that means you look a bit goofy as an adult trying to do some things that you're trying to get maybe six, seven, eight year old kids to do. But um, if you're able to join in with them, then they'll want to participate and help you out too. And then that's simple English. Just uh, make sure you use the, the key words, the key phrases. Uh, don't try to be overly polite with a lot of flowery language. Just give them what they need to know. And that'll help them understand and join in. Okay, that brings us to the end of the classroom instructions module. Hopefully it's given you a brief basic overview of uh, what you need to do in the English classroom at school. Just uh, keep those GES in mind, gestures, energy, simple English, and uh, get ready to have some fun with the kids. All right, so that's the end of the first part there, just uh, a quick look at a training module. We'll go ahead and uh, jump into the second part here, opportunities in working with Interact North if nobody has any questions. Um, I have a question. Ah, yes, go ahead. Um, so uh, that looks good in the classroom scene, but how have things changed, um, especially with is, are the schools you're working with doing like hybrid classes with uh, half Zoom or how has the um, current pandemic changed uh, the normal ALT operating mode? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, and the answer is actually pretty simple. The, right now, schools are still operating. Uh, Japan has actually taken a very easy to understand stance and said that um, it's very important for students who are in primary and secondary education, uh, all the way up from uh, elementary school to high school, they think that uh, it's, it's very important for those kids to have a, a real classroom experience. So at the moment, schools are fully operating. Uh, some of the schools in the urban area are operating at reduced capacity, uh, but you will have students in the classes. You'll be teaching them in person. Uh, so you don't have to worry too much about Zoom or internet troubles. Uh, you just uh, be there working with the kids directly for the most part. Uh, having said that, it's not completely the same as it was in years past. Uh, there, there have been requests to change the types of activities that we do uh, so that uh, you don't have kids uh, yelling and screaming, obviously. Uh, some schools have very strict rules about not having students face each other when they're talking to each other. Uh, some will go even stricter than that and say that they don't want the kids talking to each other at all, and it'll be only uh, teacher uh, and student communication. Uh, so there are some kind of limitations compared to previous years, uh, but you would be working with students in the actual classroom itself. 
Okay, interesting. That's uh, similar to what's happening with my daughter, where they can't even speak during lunch hour, and it's, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty common, actually, for, for school lunch. Once the masks are off, there there's no talking allowed. Yeah. Okay. All right. If there are no other questions, I'll, I'll move on to the next part here. If uh, you're interested in working with us, this will be very relevant to you. Uh, who, who is Interac actually? This is, um, I think a lot of people have heard of us, but uh, you don't necessarily know a lot about us. Uh, Interac is, is actually quite a, an old company now. We are founded in 1972, uh, but at that time we were doing something very different from what we do now. Uh, obviously now people know us as a, an ALT company, uh, but at the beginning we were uh, we had no ALTs, uh, mostly because there were no ALTs in Japan yet. Um, but at the beginning, Interact was founded as a business teaching, uh, business English teaching company, working in a lot of different Japanese companies. Uh, but now we, we focus on ALT work. We have over 3,400 ALTs, and they're managed in 13 branches throughout Japan. Uh, we have a presence in every prefecture aside from Okinawa. So 46 of the 47 prefectures, uh, we have ALTs working in them. Uh, there are a lot of schools, a lot of students, a lot of lessons taught by Interact ALTs. If you look at it from a percentage perspective, about one fourth of uh, Japanese elementary school students have an Interact ALT. Our corporate philosophy has actually been around with us for quite a while, although it's been revised. Uh, it was revised about five years ago uh, to match up with uh, kind of the more modern look that we have now. Uh, but the key concept there is really whole person education. And, um, you know, when, when you think about ALT, one of the, the easiest things that pops to mind is teaching English, right, or, or uh, teaching in a, a public school. And uh, it's important to remember that uh, you, you'll be teaching English, yes, but you'll also be doing a lot more than that. Uh, the cultural ambassador aspect of the ALT job is, is absolutely crucial. And if you, if you don't have that part down, it, it actually doesn't matter how good you are at teaching English, it's just not gonna go so well for you. Um, but really we wanna be able to teach the kids of Japan uh, and teach the communities of Japan uh, what it's, well, you know, that, uh, uh, we want to teach them our culture, obviously, but we also want to teach them that uh, we're able to understand Japanese culture and be a part of their communities and be an important part of Japan as well. Okay, here's a look at uh, Interact's five regional companies. I'm um, here representing Interact North today, but we do have four other companies aside from us, uh, each covering a, a certain region of Japan. From the north to the south, we've got North, Kanto North, Kanto South, Kansai, Tokai, and then Interact West. Uh, excuse me, Andy, are they separate companies or are they separate divisions within the same company? Uh, they are actually separate companies, yes. Uh, it's, uh, uh, in terms of daily operation, I don't think you, you'd see any difference working as an ALT in the companies, uh, mm -hmm. but they are separate companies, yeah. I think the only time that an ALT might notice is if you do decide to transfer to a different region of Japan, you would have to uh, sign a different contract, sign new paperwork with that company as well. But aside from that, it's, it's basically, um, basically the same thing for you working in the classroom. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so uh, you've, you've seen a little bit about Interact as a whole in the numbers there. Um, how about Interact North? Uh, we're Interact's, I believe we're the second smallest company or fourth largest company at the moment. We cover seven prefectures, which is not so many. Uh, and yet uh, we have the largest land area in Japan, I believe. Uh, mostly thanks to Hokkaido being so large, but uh, we'll take that prize anyway. Uh, we have over 350. Right now we have 390 ALTs working with us. Uh, managed through three branch offices. And we serve over 1,000 schools, and we actually have a lot of boards of education with us. 
um, just because of the, the rural areas in Japan, they have a lot of different towns and villages with a lot of different boards of education. All right. Uh, so why, why, why would it be good to work at Interact North? Uh, there are a couple of different things that give us unique advantages over working in the other areas of Japan. Uh, one being the, um, I think really the work-life balance. Um, if you're working in the cities uh, like Tokyo, Osaka, yeah, you probably need to spend a little bit more money on, on your rent, uh, maybe on um, going out to eat, meeting up with friends. Uh, and we do have a lot of instructors in those cities uh, who, who then take on second jobs uh, to help them uh, earn a little bit more money to spend on the weekends or in the evenings. Uh, in the North, I mean, it could be a positive for you. Uh, when you're working in school, you, know, you, you, you have work and you have your kids, you have your uh, teachers and what you need to keep busy. Outside of that, you, you have a lot of your own time and uh, you can use that time to, to improve your, your skills. You can use that to, you know, take part in your hobbies, participate in your hobbies. Um, but you, you have that time uh, to yourself uh, to spend with your friends there and a bit more of a work-life balance than working in one of the, the busy uh, expensive cities. Uh, working with us in the north, uh, career advancement is another big part there. Um, we have a lot of uh, a lot of staff in our branches working as the instructor development managers. They all came up through uh, Interac. They all started as ALTs, uh, joined up as head teachers after that, and then moved into the office positions there. Uh, so that's a big part of working with us. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the different opportunities with Interact in a later slide as well. Uh, support. Uh, Interact North offers a lot of support to its instructors. Uh, so beyond just paying the salaries, uh, we do also help people with the, their, their daily lives. And actually just um, uh, this, our, I guess it was technically yesterday, there was a large earthquake, but we've already contacted all of our ALTs by phone, by email. Um, just to make sure that they're all right and we're helping them with any of the, the repairs they need to their apartments or their cars. Uh, we take very good care of our teachers there. Um, and I'm very happy that we're able to do that being one of the smaller companies in Interact. Okay. Diversity Interact is actually represented by 82 different companies or sorry, 82 different countries. Uh, we have a lot of people from a lot of different places teaching for us and uh, we hope that you, you'll join us too. Just a little bit about our areas here. Uh, Sapporo branch is in Hokkaido prefecture, uh, Japan's largest prefecture. As you might imagine for the prefecture being farthest north, uh, there's a lot of snow, um, but uh, it's known for the best ski resorts and also the snow festival. Uh, definitely one of the best places to live, I think. And uh, that's surely evidenced by Hokkaido consistently ranking the top three of the, the most attractive prefectures in Japan. Um, sorry if that seems like a bit of an odd adjective to use that uh, the, every year there's a, a Japanese, I think it's a newspaper or, or magazine that runs the most attractive prefecture of Japan. Uh, Sapporo, or sorry, Hokkaido is always in the top three. Uh, Okinawa and then uh, Kyoto usually rank up there. Tokyo is usually in the top, top five or so. Uh, here's just a few more pictures of uh, what it's like in, in Hokkaido. Uh, the bottom left there is uh, Odori Park. Right in the middle of Sapporo, they have a, a massive park that goes for many, many, many city blocks. Uh, quite a sight to look at. Lots of festivals there. Uh, not, not at the moment currently um, with the pandemic going on, but uh, once we get through that, I uh, hope that we can all look forward to meeting up together there too. Hokkaido is uh, inhabited by the Ainu people, so it's it's a little bit different from the rest of Japan, as there are uh, some indigenous people up here uh, who are not the, the I guess what you would call the, the mainline Japanese, and you can still see a lot of that culture, um, especially in the the names of the places in in Hokkaido. Uh, 
in a lot of places with Betze in the name, which is uh, Ainu for river. And uh, in Hokkaido, in the Sapporo branch, we work with uh, all, all various types of schools there, from preschool all the way up through high school. Uh, we don't have that many high schools, um, but we do have a few. Uh, moving south one, we next have the Morioka branch based in Iwate Prefecture. Uh, Morioka branch manages these three prefectures in northern Tohoku, Iwate, Akita, and Aomori. Right. Tohoku is uh, actually my favorite region of Japan, <laughs> uh, mostly because I, I moved there first in 2007 when I first arrived in Japan. Uh, I lived in uh, Miyagi, which I'll talk about after Morioka branch. Um, but the Tohoku is great. Um, there's, there's plenty of open space, nature, uh, places to go hiking and do lots of outdoor sports. Uh, I play ice hockey myself and uh, there's, there's the, the ability to do that as well too. All right. Actually, uh, Hiraizumi might be uh, under the radar for most people, but uh, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site uh, located in southern Iwate. So if you have a chance, even if you don't work with us, if you have a chance to visit Tohoku, uh, be sure to stop by there and see the, the lovely temples. And I highly recommend Kakunodate in, uh, in Hanami or Sakura season. It's just amazing with the, the traditional Japanese samurai houses and uh, the Hanami or the Sakura line streets there is just beautiful. Uh, the Morioka branch manages uh, the preschool through high school. And actually with the Iwate prefecture contract, the Morioka branch has actually a, quite a large number of high school positions throughout uh, Iwate prefecture. Uh, sometimes people are very interested in teaching an older level of student, just so you can have a more I guess somebody closer to, to your own age to have a real conversation with rather than uh, the elementary school conversations, the Morioka branch is a great place to try that out. And then uh, the, the last branch in our North company here is the Sendai branch, which manages Fukushima, Yamagata and Miyagi prefectures. I spent six years living in Miyagi myself and uh, I, I just, Lots of happy memories there. Um, it, it's a great place to be. Um, I think uh, Southern Tohoku is probably, some people would think of the greatest advantages. It's just a stone's throw from the Tokyo area too. If you jump on a, a Shinkansen bullet train, it, it's, you're there in 90 minutes to do it uh, So if, um, if you wanna get away from Tokyo, but still be kind of close when you wanna make a trip in for a weekend or so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Tohoku is an, an awesome place to be. Uh, there's a lot of different things in southern Tohoku actually because of uh, it, it's it's actually kind of interesting because in the north it can be um, a bit cold, uh, especially when you go out to the west and then you go down south and it, it's much, much warmer there actually. And so a lot of different uh, types of climates, even though it's not that far apart. All right. Uh, so then uh, I'll just kind of wrap up here talking about working with us. Uh, we advertise um, our, our conditions online as well. So you've probably seen these a bit before, but um, as an ALT, you'd be teaching in public schools. Uh, you work with your Japanese colleagues at the schools to prepare lessons and materials. Uh, you will be asked to take part in school events like the sports days, cultural festivals, and again, uh, you do have a lot more chance to see uh, the, the local areas uh, aside from your own city area there too. That's one of the great things about being an ALT is you will have time, you, know, you will have free time to yourself, uh, whether you wanna use that to travel or study or uh, whatever you might wanna do. Uh, the monthly salary there is 215,000 yen per month. And uh, we pay that uh, even during the summer and the winter months when you're on vacation from school break. Uh, transportation costs are reimbursed and for our drivers we do have allowances uh, to help you with 
the costs of commuting. Uh, you can use that to pay for gasoline, for example. And then probably the best part of working as an ALT compared to maybe an AECAO is uh, you have a fairly normal working schedule uh, weekdays from sometimes between 8 and 5 p.m. All right. Uh, so that's that's all well and good, but uh, why why interact then? What makes you different from other ALT companies? Uh, there are there are a few things. One of them is that uh, we are making significant efforts to try and improve engagement between the companies and the ALTs, and this is actually fairly difficult, I think, because um, we don't see each other a lot. Uh, ALTs spend most of their time at school, um, but uh, what we do is we try to provide uh, opportunities to engage with the company outside of that. Uh, it does mean using some of your free time to attend seminars or trainings, for example. Um, but we are trying to do something that uh, uh, it, you know provides other people a way to uh, connect and learn more about us and also get something for themselves. Uh, one of our branches recently ran a, a, a just basically a career seminar, and we had uh, 90 teachers, I believe it was 87, about 90 ALTs join us for that, and we're very happy with the results there. And then one of the biggest things about working with Interac is that we do have career opportunities uh, via our career navigation program. Um, one of the biggest parts of uh, working with us is that we are a big company. We have a presence all over Japan and we have a lot of different people making great things that we can share with everybody. Uh, the career navigation program has two main parts. One is uh, providing training. Uh, so this is training that's not necessarily for your work as an ALT. Things like communication skills, management skills. Um, I recently ran a, a seminar on Excel, Microsoft Excel skills. So if you want to learn to use Excel to make spreadsheets or uh, get better at using spreadsheets, uh, we provide a lot of different types of training uh, for, for different interests or uh, for different skills. And uh, as I said, it's, it's not for ALT work, the Career Navigation Program. Um, so it might seem weird that we're training you in things that uh, you wouldn't use in an ALT job, but part of our realization or understanding is that uh, most people probably are not going to be with us for the rest of their lives. Uh, so we also want to provide something that will help you in whatever you choose to do for your next job or next career as well. And I think that really sets us apart from the other ALT companies who are Kind of looking more just at the the immediate short term uh, you know what what do you need right now uh, but uh, uh, we, we do that as well uh, but we also want to do something more than what you can get somewhere else and then the other half of the cnp is that uh, as one of the larger companies in japan and the largest alt provider uh, we have a lot of different offices and a lot of different jobs uh, and a lot of our alts decide that they want to do something beyond teaching in a school classroom and then they they start to do other things with us and the common thread really is that uh, all, all of our jobs will be helping alts uh, so uh, whether you're a recruiter and you're helping alts get a job or you're an instructor development manager and you're you're helping manage the alts helping them with their daily life uh, whatever trouble they might have in in school or outside of school uh, and then there's head teacher and relief teacher, which are um, kind of our, our senior instructors there really, uh, where the head teacher is supporting ALTs in their daily life, giving them lesson ideas too that they can use in school. And a relief teacher is somebody that fills in when there's an ALT that's taking time off or uh, especially as, as was um, uh, happened around the country this year with ALTs being unable to arrive, uh, they would, uh, the relief teachers might be filling in for ALTs at schools uh, in medium term or long term. Even. Okay, uh, finally here, just uh, running through the recruiting process. If you are interested in working with us, it's um, it's, it's all fairly straightforward. Uh, we have an application form that we ask you to fill out. And then uh, after you fill that out, we'd uh, have a screening process uh, followed up by an interview and then an introduction to, to possible placements. Uh, part of the interview process or application process, you will need to make a demonstration video. Uh, so be ready for that. Of course, we'll send you these instructions when you're, you're in the application itself. Uh, we do uh, like to share with our Filipino, Filipina applicants that uh, you do need an OEC if you're going to work with us 
uh, under an instructor visa there. If you have questions about this, please ask us during the application process and we'll explain it to you in full detail. And if you're not from a country whose official language is English, uh, you, you will need to also supply 12 years of English education proof if you're going to get your status of residence or visa converted to an instructor's residence. And of course, we can give you this information too if you ask. I'll just kind of close up here. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're interested in applying to work with us, go ahead and contact us here at this email address, north-recruit at interact.co.jp. I uh, hope to see your application soon, and thank you very much for your time today.